Thanks for everybody joining us here today. We got a nice program in store for you. We're very, very fortunate, and we are thankful to have the five head football coaches from the Division I schools right here in our Triangle area. And we welcome a new head coach to our podium, Henry Frazier III of North Carolina Central University. Henry. Tobacco Road Sports Cafe is proud to be the sponsor of the Bill Dooley Pigskin Preview. When approached about sponsoring this event, my brothers and I didn't hesitate about becoming the sponsors. This event reflects why we opened our restaurants in North Carolina. It's the best place to be a sports fan. And what better way to enjoy the game than amongst friends with drinks and good food. When we talked about opening a second location in Durham, people told us that other than Duke basketball, Durham is not a sports town. Fortunately for us, we didn't listen to them. And if you come into our location on any Saturday afternoon at the American Tobacco Campus, thanks to Coach Cutcliffe and his team, you will see that Durham is now much more than a basketball town. Honestly, our biggest surprise since opening Tobacco Road in Durham has been the loyalty of the Central fans. Shortly after opening, a Central alum came to us and basically harassed us because we had a paragraph on our menu explaining some of the Tobacco Road teams and Central wasn't part of that uh, little explanation. So this fan demanded that we change our menu and put it on there. We caved to the presser and put Central on, in the paragraph. And to be honest with you, we're glad we did. Central's homecoming weekend is one of the big, biggest weekends at either one of our locations. Uh, Central's homecoming weekend. So for that, I'd like to thank the Central fans and wish Coach Fraser the best in his first season as the head coach of the Central. All right, time to Q&A with the coaches, and we'll just have, as we go down the line here, I'll start with Coach O'Brien. Uh, give us a little snapshot of your team this year, both on the O side and the D side, and Coach, if you'll uh, crank it up for us. I found out today sitting next to Brian is that uh, business goes up 32% when the Wolfpack wins. So I'm under a lot of pressure. He's been on me all day to say that. That could really help his bottom line if we win a few games this year. So I told him we would do our best. All right. Well, first, I hope that I coach this fall better than I did a couple of weeks ago in my office with Don. I coached him on public speaking. The three B's of public speaking, again, Don, are be brief, be funny, and be seated. You've done none of them. Okay. Uh, he's, he's, he's tough. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. First of all, Don, thank you for uh, not letting me go first because I didn't know what to say. You know, when you're a new coach, they, sometimes they just put you and make you go first. But, but I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of having this opportunity to come here and, and speak to you guys on behalf of our Chancellor, Charlie Nams at North Carolina Central, our athletic director, Dr. Ingrid Wicker McCree. I'm the new guy. I haven't lost a football game, so I'm pretty happy. That's why I'm smiling. <laughs> you know, I, you know. You could have got 2,000 for this helmet. I could have signed it and I'm undefeated, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we actually, you know, came in from Texas, and I'm sorry to bring all that. I thought I escaped this, this, this feel like I'm back in Houston with all this humidity, but, but we're excited. We're excited about what's going to take place at North Carolina Central. We're, the transitioning from Division Two to Division One is pretty much almost complete, and, and we, had a, we had a very good recruiting class, and we had a very exciting spring. You know, we, we're trying to lay a foundation that we're going to be able to stand on for the next few months. And you know, we get after it on August the 2nd, and, and everything is wide open. All positions are wide open, and, and I think we have some, some good young football players that, has, that are buying into what we're selling. I think that they, they're going to go out and su surprise a few people. You know, we're scheduled for quite a few homecomings, so, so we're going to have some fun this year. And uh, we're excited about what's to come. Um, on the offense side of the ball, you know, they are some pretty good football players. I think the strength of our team will be in our wide receivers. Uh, they did an outstanding job in recruiting wide receivers here, and, and, and they, they're pretty good. Just got to get them guys not to play selfish, and, and sometimes they got to open up windows for the other guys. You're not always getting the ball, so, and, and again, they're buying into what we're selling, and, and we have a few seniors on the offensive line that, that, that you know, but, but if they go down, we're going to have to play some freshmen, but I'm, I'm not afraid to put some freshmen out there, you know, because we're building something that's going to be very special. On the defensive side of the ball, 
you know, I think our defensive line is pretty strong right now. I think they, you know, we're going to have to count on those guys to, to, to keep them linemen from running free and getting to our backers, and, and they're pretty good. You know, we're going to go with a freshman kick as well, but we have some exciting special team guys, some return guys that, that I think is going to change the game for us. So, so we're excited about everything, and I'm excited to be here, and, I, and I'm very, very appreciative. Thank you. Do older coaches make better coaches? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I Next. agree. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Coach Davis, do you want to uh, respond there? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I think obviously the experience that you gain uh, is a huge advantage. Totally agree with it. <laughs> the older the better. You like fine wine. <laughs> Coach Frazier. Wow, I guess. I might be the youngest coach. You are the puppy. <laughs> You're the puppy. So how do I answer that? Huh? You might be an old coach after this year. You yeah, mean? how about that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, an experience is the best teacher, you know, without a doubt. But I think you definitely have to surround yourself with some young coaches to be in tune to what's going on because it's forever changing. And every four or five years, the whole culture of, of the country changes. And if you're not in touch, the old coach will be a, an outer coach. <laughs> <laughs> what other sport? Do you think any of you could have coached other than football? Coach O'Brien. Um, you know, in, in our area, we grew up playing football, basketball, and baseball. I mean, that's what we did. We were outside all day long and played. I, I think the sport that intrigues me the most, and I wasn't introduced, it, uh, introduced to it until I got to the Naval Academy, was lacrosse. And, and I, I really like a game where they give you a stick and you can hit people. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I could have been a pretty good lacrosse coach. Coach Cutcliffe. Oh, it would be baseball uh, with me. And uh, I, I really uh, it would enjoy sitting in the dugout, chewing tobacco, spitting and talking, <laughs> telling stories. I mean, what better way to go, huh? I like that. Uh, for me, it would have been baseball. Um, I think you know every pitch, every opportunity is something to think about. I was an ex-quarterback. I know I look like an offensive lineman, maybe, maybe a pulling guard now. But, but it, you know I played quarterback and, and, and all, always using your mind, always having an opportunity. And that's what baseball. That's what intrigued me about baseball, having to think even if someone's on base. You know, have to change your signals and, and just doing different things. So I, you know, I do like to think a little bit. So. Uh, you're full-time Division One now in the MEAC, mm -hmm. so the level of competition for the for the Eagles will step up. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and uh, I'm excited. Uh, we've been watching a little film, and and um, you know, we open up with Rutgers, though, so you know that's not the MEAC. So you know, we'll, we'll you know we'll get uh, should have got this helmet signed in early, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> And we'll go up there, give us, give our, give our best shot, you know. And um, but, but I'm, I'm excited. We'll, we'll be fine. All right, toss-up question: What is your non-sports hobby? <laughs> non-sports hobby. Non-sports hobby. Um, you know, probably a little bit of reading. I enjoy reading a variety of different things. I'm a big sports fan, so. You know, the, you know, playing golf and doing all that kind of stuff with my son and my wife it takes up a big part of it. But I enjoy reading when, uh, uh, when you get a chance. Coach Cutcliffe? Hobby? Yeah. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike you, Coach Cl Cutcliffe, your wife's a hog, my wife's a job, so. <laughs> That's a full-time job, so. <laughs> Now, I love that job, though. I love the job, man. Uh, for me, for me, I would say it, it, it's, it's, it's watching movies. Uh, I'm a movie guy. And even when we go to travel to ball games, we're not watching football. We're watching movies. So we, you know, I, I love to watch a good movie. Well, it's... it's we're two weeks out now, so it, yeah, it, you know this is where you get you get excited. You get excited uh, as to what's going to, what's going to take place, and uh, you know we work extremely hard in the off season and uh, spring practice and then summer workouts, and now it's time to put up. So so we're excited. I think the kids are buying into what we're selling, 
You know, they, they're doing everything that we're asking them to do. And as, as football coaches, we have to put everything in place where these guys are going to be successful. So now it comes on us now. Right. So, so, so I'm excited. I mean, you know, we have some good football players that I think is going to be productive this season. And, um, you know, we're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, it seems like that, that, that's been my calling. You know, I, you know, I enjoy it because oftentimes I tell you it's harder to maintain. So maybe I'm just afraid, you know, we get to winning and winning championships and I run off, you know. But, um, it, you know, it, it, it does take a certain skill set. And I, I know I have the formula in order you know, to implement you know, what it takes to turn around the program. And that's why I think they gave me the shot. So I'm, I'm excited for, for this opportunity. I'm oh, yeah, that's too. the last game of the season. You've been over the head with that stuff? All the time. I, they always say, well, I just want you to win one game. And I look at them and say, now, if I go one and ten, you know you're going to want me to run me out of town. So I understand the importance of rivalries. Um, you know, everybody have their rivalries. So you know, I got I got my good eye on them, down, but it's, it's down the road. But you can't get past Rutgers, man. I can't get past that big R. So, you know, we got our work cut out for us. But, but we, we, we'll approach every game the same way. And, and, and what's the process that you follow to convince these guys that you're worth following? Oh, uh, One of the main things is believing in, in, in what I'm doing. I have to believe in myself. You know, then I have to get coaches that believe in in what I'm selling. I remember a story at Prairie View when I first got the job. My first staff meeting, I had hired office coordinator, and he called me from the staff meeting saying he he took another job. <laughs> so you know, I had so many guys turn me down. You know, when I took that job down there. So you know, it's important to find guys that, that believe in what you believe in, and. I think this is a this is a better opportunity because now I have a little more hardware behind my name. So when I go to these guys to buy in, you know, I had I, you know my track record is a little better. At Prairie View, they looked at me, you know, I had never went to Texas except for on the interview. So those guys didn't know me. I hadn't really won anything, and mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a, it was a little tougher. So but now it's kind of like well, no, I've done it a few times now. So the guys kind of like well, coach knows what he's talking about.